Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Chorus Studio. Welcome to the show. So, I have built quite a few decks in my Commander career. A lot. Uh, I mean, I think last count I've had over 100 or so deck techs or whatnot. So yeah, I've built, I've built quite a few decks. And there's a lot that I've been really proud of and that I've really enjoyed and that I've bought and played. But there's one that has been on my back burner for a, a long time. There is one that... I have not been able to quite get right yet. There is one that I really want to make work, but I can't get it to work. And so I'd like to talk about that, that deck today and talk about kind of what, what challenges kind of I've faced with that deck, what the, the inspiration for the deck is, kind of what I want it to do, and kind of why I don't think I can get it to work just yet in the way that I want to. And yeah, actually to put it out to you as well, the community to... Give me feedback on it. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you would solve my deck building issue. So yeah, let's jump into it. So when I was a kid, uh, one of my favorite cards was Voice of the Woods. Voice of the Woods is a 2-2 elf lord. I'm, I'm sure that's different now. Sorry, I don't have the, the updated version in front of me. But basically a an elf that you can tap five untapped elves you control. And then you put a 7-7 seven, seven green elemental creature token with trample into play. So... You get a lot of elves into play, you tap them, you make more, or you make giant elementals. And so this is kind of like a, a lord effect, a tapping lord effect that you can utilize a certain creature type. So another one is like a captivating vampire. A 2-2 two, two vampire for one black black gives all your other vampires you control plus one plus one. And you can also tap five untapped vampires you control and gain control of target creature. It becomes a vampire addition to other types. So basically, you tap your vampires, you gain control of something, you get another vampire essentially. And then you can just keep doing that and gaining control of your opponent's creatures. Uh, Lull Mage Mentor is somewhat similar. A 2-2 Morphulk Wizard that costs 1 blue blue. Whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell, you may put a 1-1 one, one blue Morphulk creature token onto the battlefield. Tap 7 untap Merfolk you control, counter target spell. Basically, you can utilize your Merfolk to counter spells and also to make Merfolk, again, giving you more Merfolk to counter more spells. Now, you might think, okay, these are all three very different uh, cards that fit in different decks because, you know, they each deal with different creature types. Well, that's kind of where I want to include all of them. I kind of want to do a a Lord Tribal type of deck with a lot of tapping synergies. So essentially being able to tap creatures for multiple Lords and be able to do this. Now, of course, the main way to do that is going to be Changeling, and I'll get to that here in a second. But let's talk about some other Lord type effects that could really go into a deck like this that could really make it a very powerful deck if you can get kind of all your creatures on the same page. Galecaster Colossus. Galecaster Colossus is a 5-6 giant wizard that has tap and untap wizard you control, return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. So this basically turns all your wizards into, hey, tap, bounce, tap, bounce, tap, bounce, tap, bounce, which can be, again, very powerful. Battletide Alchemist is a 3-4 Kithkin Cleric that says, if a source would deal damage to a player, you may prevent X of that damage where X is the number of clerics you control. So this one actually works for all players. So, of course, this can protect you if you've got an army full of clerics. You can protect yourself pretty easily. Someone's got to hate you with something really big in order to get through. If you've got six clerics, clerics on the board and someone hits you with a 6-6, six, six, it's not going to do any damage to you. And again, you can actually use this as a political tool as well because this is for any player. So if someone else is about to get hit, you can save them as well, again, for a political favor. Lord of the Unreal is another kind, different kind of lord. It gives your illusion creatures you control plus one plus one in Hexproof. So it pumps your illusions and also makes them harder to deal with. Now... All these lords, again, are dealing with different creature types, but if you have, you know, changelings in play like a universal automaton, those changelings count as every single creature type, so they get all the benefits. So you're benefiting from all those, you can tap them for whichever thing that you need, again, with those tap lords, and again, they get the, you know, the plus plus one in hexproof, they get the, you know, uh, additional damage prevented for that cleric. There's a lot of different lords out there that can do some really cool things, I think all including them all in the same deck would be really cool. The problem is, again, that you need kind of a the right combination of things. You know, you need a good amount of changelings on the board. You also need them. And again, they can't help tap for each other's things 
unless you've got something like an arcane adaptation in play. Arcane adaptation, when it comes into play, you choose a creature type, and then creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to other types. The same is true for creatures, spells you control, and creature cards you don't you own that aren't on the battlefield. So basically, this makes all your creatures the same type throughout your entire deck. This can help, obviously. It doesn't make all of your creatures into the uh, into changelings, which would be better, but it does allow you to, you know, if you've got a bunch of wizards and, you know, elves on the board, you can just choose to make them all wizards as well, so they can all tap for whatever wizard thing, like a Galeclast or Colossus. Now, uh, Mer Mirror Turbine is, a, is an example of a card that can also help you kind of get more mirror into play, and then also, again, you can tap five untapped mirror you control, and you can search your library for a mirror creature card and put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. So if you kind of combine this with like an arcane adaptation and said, you know, arcane adaptation comes into play, you choose mirror. Now you can tap your, you know, all, any of your creatures, essentially, any five of your creatures, and then search your library for any other creature and then get that directly into play. So again, you can get more lord effects to kind of help you out. So... That's kind of the crux of the issue here is you've got, you know, you need to have the right balance of lords, you need the right balance of changelings, you need to make sure that you can find the right balance of pretty much everything in order to kind of fit all these differing ideas into the deck. And that's kind of where I think I'm stuck is because there's a, a, there's a decent amount going on and usually you want, you know, your deck to focus on specific things. And I'm usually pretty good at having a lot of synergy in the deck and, you know, building and making sure I'm focusing on, you know, one or two things and not trying to spread the focus too far. And I think that's my main problem is that there really isn't a commander out there yet, and I'll talk about some commanders later, that I'm considering for a deck like this that really can allow me to fully focus on what I really want this deck to do. Uh, some other cards that can really help, though, let's talk about those first. Gem Hide Sliver gives all your slivers the ability to tap for an adding one man of any color to your mana pool. So again, basically your changelings now can also tap, or if you've got our arcane adaptation out and you say sliver, all your creatures can tap to help you cast, you know, any anything, essentially. And again, the more creatures you can play, the more mana that you have access to. And this really helps you fix your mana, which is really crucial because this one's going to be, in my mind, a five color deck. Because again, you want all these different kinds of lords and all the different kinds of fun effects. Risen Reef is another way that can help you provide card advantage as well as ramp, depending on what, you know, is or what's on top of your library. It says whenever it or another elemental enters the battlefield under your control, get the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it in your hand. So essentially, you know, all, if you choose, you know, with Arcane Adaptation Elemental, now all of your creatures come into play, even if they are an elemental themselves actually or not, are going to be able to kind of help ramp you or help you draw cards. Speaking of drawing cards, let's move on to... Some other lords with Exami Lady of Scrolls has tap and untap wizard you control, draw a card. So yeah, now essentially making it so that pretty much all of your creatures, if you can turn them into wizards, or again, if they're changelings, can tap to draw. That is a really powerful thing. Seagate Loremaster is somewhat similar. It can tap to draw a card for each ally you control. So again, if you make all your creatures into allies, you're going to be drawing a ton of cards with this. Now, the other kind of piece of this deck that I really want to make work, and again, there's probably too many pieces that are really coming together, you know, without the right commander is untapping because of all these lords that i'm including that have all these really cool tap effects having the ability to untap furnish all your creatures or all the lords or whatnot can be a very powerful thing so like mere galvanizer has other mere creatures you control get plus one plus one so that's a nice little boost and then also pay one and tap it to untap each other mirror you control so if you you know have arcane adaptation in play and all your other creatures are mirrors then guess what you get to untap everything and then tap them again for some more powerful effects and so on and so forth Marrow Commerce is the same thing, but for Merfolk, it says at the end of your turn, untap all Merfolk you control. And then Faces of the Past is an interesting one. It says whenever creatures put into a grave graveyard from play, tap or untap all creatures that share a creature type with it. Now, if you've got the ability to give all your creatures, uh, you know, all creature types until the end of the turn, there are certain cards that can do that. You know, that I, I believe they're, they're tribal synergy, uh, or tribal uh, changeling spells that you can basically kind of make all your creatures into all creature types until the end of the turn. If a creature happens to die, even if it's one of your opponent's creatures, then all your creatures are going to be untapping, and then you can just, you know, utilize all those effects again and again. So there are some ways to do that on top of, you know, uh, arcane adaptation or just using a bunch of changelings. Now let's kind of get to the crux of the issue, and this is the, the commanders that I'm currently considering for this kind of a deck and that I've been trying to kind of work around and make work, but don't exactly, in my opinion, really work to the full effect that I want. So Morphon the Boundless is the first one. A 6-6 six, six Shapeshifter with Changeling that costs 7. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Spells of the chosen type you cast cost Wooburg less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of color mana you pay. Uh, other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus, plus 1. So basically, you come, it comes into play. You choose whatever creature type is most beneficial to you at the time. It's going to reduce the cost of, well, all your Changelings, first of all, no matter what. And then it also reduces the cost of, say, Wizards, if you have a bunch of Wizards in your hand that you want to cast. 
So this does help buff and it helps reduce the cost of spells, but again, it doesn't really help you actually kind of make your creatures into the right creature types, unfortunately. The Ur Dragon has a somewhat similar problem, but can help you again in a similar way. It's a 10 10 Dragon Avatar that costs 4 in Wooburg. It has eminence as long as the Ur Dragon is in your command zone or on the battlefield. Other dragon spells you cast cost bonus to cast, and it's got flying. Whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So this does kind of have that benefit that, you know, if you've got a bunch of changelings on the board, then you know what, whenever you swing with those changelings, they count as dragons, and then you get to draw more cards, and so on and so forth. On top of that, one thing that you might not realize is that if this is in your command zone, you've got a bunch of changelings in your deck, all those are going to have a reduced mana cost, as long as you know they have a colorless mana in their mana, not colorless mana, but a generic mana in their mana cost. So... This does help with dragons, yes, but also helps with changelings, which can be great. So again, this one you don't even have to actually play for it to actually benefit you if you've got enough changelings in your deck. The final one that I kind of thought about considering is a like a Xur the Enchanter. Whenever it attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment card with converted mana cost three or less to put onto the battlefield if you do shuffle your library. So this can help kind of get you that arcane adaptation. Can help you kind of be a toolbox commander to get other things as well. This one does limit you to though into just three colors. And again, arcane adaptation is only going to be able to give all your creatures one creature type, unfortunately not all creature types. So there are some considerations when it comes to actually picking the right commander. And unfortunately for me, I don't think that there really is a right commander for this kind of type of deck that I really want to make yet. And so yeah, I really hope that someday the perfect commander for a deck like this can come out. And actually there kind of already is the perfect commander that's out there and has already been designed with the first changeling, which comes from Hail to the King from the custom Dragon Highlander community. It's a community that's dedicated to designing really cool and awesome commander cards so if you haven't heard about them yet go ahead and check them out they've got a great discord i'll make sure i link that in the description below anyways the first changeling is a 4-4 shapeshifter with changeling it costs wooberg and it says creatures you control are all creature types whenever you cast a creature spell you may pay four if you do create a token that's a copy of that card except it's not legendary so yeah this is like the perfect commander for this kind of a deck it turns every single one of your creatures into every single kind of creature. So basically, yeah, all of your lords now can tap for any kind of a lord effect. You can actually even, you know, when those creatures come into play, potentially make a second copy of them, which can help out as well. This is just basically, again, the perfect five color commander for a, a lord's tribal kind of deck, like the one that I'm envisioning and am struggling to kind of finish. So yeah, I might just have to ask my playgroup if it's, a, if it's okay that I build around this one because this really is the perfect kind of commander for this kind of a deck. And again, if you like thinking up and designing your own kinds of cards, make sure you check out the Custom Dragon Highlander community. They're a fantastic group. And again, the link is in the description below. But anyways, now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this kind of a deck are. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What recommendations would you have? Is there a commander out there right now that you think that could really fit for a deck like this? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.